Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're working on methods of proof to exercise 7e. So uh, what we're going to look at here is a few more different ways of proving mathematical statements. Here we're going to look at a method of exhaustion. So what we're going to do is we're going to split a certain proof up into a couple of different scenarios and hence uh, show that this uh, theorem works for all of the different scenarios, so hence the theorem works. Uh, this, uh, this method is good, but there are a limited number of cases in which we can apply it. And in this case here, in this question down below here, we can apply it. So prove that all the square numbers are either a multiple of 4 or 1 more than a multiple of 4. So what we'll do here is we'll look at the different two, um, the different two situations of an odd number being squared and an even number being squared. So, for example, if we're squaring an odd number, and an odd number can be written as 2p plus 1, then squaring that and expanding the brackets, we get 4p squared plus 4p, and partially factorising this, we get 4 brackets p squared plus p. Now this here is going to be the, the last case here, one more than a multiple of 4. We can clearly see here that we've got 4 times something, add 1. So in this odd case, it's going to be the example of uh, 1 more than a multiple of 4. In the even case, we'll square 2p squared, and we'll get, obviously, 4p squared. And this is the case here where it is a multiple of 4. So in this case here, what we've done is we've split up our proof into odds and evens. Sometimes you'll need to split it up into um, multiples of 3, the different multiples of 3. Um, but in this case here, it's odds and evens. So because the theorem works for odd and even, the theorem has been proven true for all cases, because all cases can be split up into even an odd case or an even case. OK, a different type of proof now. Now we're going to look at how we prove that something is not true. So in this case here, the sum of two consecutive prime numbers is always even. We're going to prove that this is not true. And the only thing that we need to do to prove that something is not true is to find a counterexample. So when you're proving a not statement, you're looking for a counterexample where this proof does not work. And what we can do here is if we use the prime numbers of 2 and 3 to add together to make 5, it doesn't equal an even number, so hence um, we get a counterexample here. So our theorem is not true. OK, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated proof here, and it's x over y plus y over x is greater than or equal to 2 for all positive values of x. Now, with inequalities, make sure you look out for this positive values of x and y, because maybe when you times one side by an x value, and it could be either a positive or a negative answer, then you need to be careful about the sign of the inequality here. OK, so what we're going to do first is look for just some rough notes on how we might look at proving this. So starting with what we've got here and maybe working our way backwards, um, we'll add the fractions first by creating common denominators. Multiply by xy. Now xy is going to be positive, so we don't have to worry about our sign here. And take 2xy onto the other side. And we notice here that this can be simplified into x minus y squared is greater than or equal to 0. Now we know that this here is going to be true. Any square number is greater than or equal to 0. So hence, if we work our way back upwards, we can prove this thing here. So what we need to do, therefore, is start with considering what x minus y squared is. And we're going to work our way back upwards what we had in our uh, rearrangement here. So this was like our rough notes on the side of the page. This is what we're actually going to put as our answer. So consider x minus y squared. x minus y squared is definitely going to be greater than or equal to 0 by the fact it's a squared term. Expand the brackets. Move the two x onto the other side and divide by uh, xy and simplify, add your 2 over onto the other side, and we get x over y plus y over x is greater than or equal to 2 for all, val all positive values x, y. 
Okay, so that's how we're going to prove a, prove a little situation like this. Right, okay, your turn then. Pause the video and have a go at these questions. Right, well done for pausing the video and uh, taking on these questions. Question two here, uh, prove that every odd integer between 2 and 26 is either prime or a product of two primes. In this case here, we can go through every uh, odd integer, so we don't need to do two. We'll start at three and either say that it's either prime or it's the product of two primes. So in this case here, three is prime, five is prime, seven is prime, nine is not prime, but it is the product of two primes, three times three. 11 is prime, 13 is prime, 15 is the product of two primes, 17 is prime, 19 is prime, 21 is the product of two primes, 23 is prime, 25 is the product of two primes, 20, no we stop at 26. Yeah, the, probably the reason we have to stop at 26 is because 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, so it's not the product of two primes anymore. So that's why we're going to stop at 25. So as we've shown it for all cases, we've proved this theorem up here. Question 6. A student is trying to prove that x cubed plus x plus y cubed is less than x plus y cubed. Uh, the student writes, <coughs> starting with x plus y cubed, uh, they've expanded this correctly, uh, which is less than x cubed plus y cubed, since 3x squared y plus 3xy squared is greater than 0. Identify the error in the proof. Well, unfortunately here, when we're working with inequalities, it's really important whether x and y can be negative or not, and there's nothing in this sentence here that says that x or y can't be negative. So the error in the proof here is that x or y could be negative. Okay, and this will lead to complications when it comes to proving this statement here. Because this statement could be um, negative here. If x and y are both negative here, then the x squared term will be positive, but it's times in by a negative, and the y squared is positive, but it was times by a negative. So if x and y are both negative, then this expression here does not hold. B is, uh, part B is provide a counterexample which shows that the statement is not true. Well, thinking here, what we want is to simplify the x plus y here to something quite small if we're trying to disprove that x cubed plus y cubed is smaller than this term here. So we'll try and make this term here small and this term here big. So if we set x <coughs> to be 3 <coughs> and y is minus 2, then x plus y cubed is just going to be 1 cubed, which is 1, <coughs> and x cubed plus y cubed separately, that's going to be 3 cubed is 27, uh, add minus 2 cubed, that's minus 8, that will sum together to make a 19. So because 19 is bigger than 1, this is a disproof of our theorem here, and it's a counterexample to show that this rule is not true. Right, thanks very much for watching. Have a go at some more proof type questions from exercise 7E. Remember, the more practice you get, the better you're going to be at these types of questions. And ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.